Hi, my name is Wendy Literal and welcome to Creation Depot. Today we're going to be talking about how to do your Facebook cover art. Okay, let's get started. So just before we get going, I want to let you know that in the description below, there is a link to download the uh, Photoshop template for what we're going to be doing. Um, it just shows you where the safe areas are in a in a Facebook cover photo. But uh, before we get even further into it, um, if you're still with me, um, if we get even further into it, I want to show you the difference between a profile cover photo and a page or event or anything like that. Um, cover photo because there is a difference and they're not super obvious, but kind of stuff you want to keep in mind if you're going to design a correct photo. Okay. So first things first, let me go ahead and show you what my profile cover photo looks like. And I just did this in Canva. I did it really quick because I needed to, to serve a need and get done. Like I needed to get this up there and then move on to other things. And I didn't think too much about it because fall is almost over and I'm going to change it out anyway. But this is my my personal Facebook account, my profile, this is my cover photo for that. And the reason I did this is because if you ever answer a question in a forum or in any kind of um, situation where somebody might like, okay, well, how does this person know the answer? Let me spy on it a little bit. And like you click on like you hover over the name and it pops up with your profile picture and your cover photo, which are public. You can't unpublic those. They're public. Um, I want people to know that I'm a professional website designer. So I just quickly threw this up there because I learned about that and I'm like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. I should do that too. So I put it on here and now people that know when I answer are using my pro my personal account when I answer stuff, that's what that's why. That's why I know what I'm doing. Um, but then also I want to show you a page one, right? This is uh, Randy Zuckerberg. Um, she came out with the, uh, uh, another book and I don't know enough about her to speak intelligently about her. I just was looking for really good examples and I came across this one. Um, but I want to show you a, a distinct difference here. Okay. If you look at hers, it got the profile photo on the left. It's not in front. Right. And then over here, you got the full width to use, right? And I'll pop up a photo here of what, what it looks like for a, um, on the mobile. And also if we'll go back to my profile, what my profile looks like on a mobile, you see the difference is that in personal profile, you've got your profile picture right smack dab in the middle of what you're trying to work on. And then on the profile, no, I'm sorry, on the page, on a business page, you've got the profile off to the left. And the same is true with events. You know, Facebook doesn't care how tall, how long your your uh, cover art is. They care about how wide it is. And you want to care about like what's called like the safe area. And you're just, if you ever design something for like Vistaprint or some other uh, printing agency, you'll know that there's like margins you got to stay within and everything. It's the same is true with Facebook. Same is true with YouTube. I mean, when you're doing the channel art, like there's like a safe area that you can put content in that you know will be seen. And the rest is just kind of like extra, you know? Um, but yeah, I want to show you the difference between these two because it will change how you are going to want to design, right? Like if you're doing a person, if you're trying to do a cover art for your, per for your profile, um, you got to know that even though it looks nice here on the website, of course it looks like this and my words are cut off and I'm kind of okay with that because you can still kind of read it, you know, and again, this was just a quick thing I put up there just to get it done. Um, I will change it up to something better later, but you know, Canva's great for just getting stuff done quickly and out the door and then coming back to it later. Um, and then for the profile or for, um, I keep trying to mix up these words. It's going to kill me all these P words. Um, the, uh, <laughs> why can I say it? The page, the Facebook page, um, one, it's always going to be like, when you go down to mobile, you'll see here, it's going to be underneath the main one. So you're okay on either way, um, with the prof, I'm mean, with the page. This is, this is going to get me. Um, anyway, so before we get going into a whole bunch of that, I wanted to pull up my notes here. So I make sure I answer everything safe areas, YouTube channel art, Facebook cover art. Oh, last thing was, is that Facebook does compression. So when you're saving out your stuff, I don't care if it's in Canva or if it's in Photoshop or PicMonkey or whatever, you got to make sure that that is under hundred K. And the reason that is because if it's over hundred K Facebook's JavaScript picks it up and it says, Hey, this is over hundred K let's run compression on it and make it look terrible. 
So it doesn't matter how simple your design is, it will put pixels around all your text, it will pixelate any photos you've got, it's just not worth it. So just when you save it out, just do the compression yourself, do it in Photoshop, and I'll show you, I'll walk you through how I do that, and then, then you'll be good. But if, you, if you're uploading photos and they're really wonky looking, it's because it's over 100K. All right, so this is my Photoshop, and this is why I want to talk to you about like the safe areas in a in a cover design. Now, all the stuff that I have put teal opacity over here, this is areas that, yeah, Facebook could pull from this, um, depending on if you're looking at it on mobile or if you're looking at it on a desktop. But you don't want to put any content in there, like text or um, your book cover, if you're doing one like the like Zuckerberg did. You know, it's like you want to have you want to have all the important stuff right here and it's a little more confusing too because if you have the profile picture of course on a on a profile this part right here in the middle is going to be taken up too so like i really should add to this and be like just for a little reminder this area is not going to be usable <laughs> so you want to have your text over that right and of course i don't know the exact dimensions of that i'm sure i could look it up but so we're gonna put our text over to the left or over to the right, or maybe just in an arch. Um, at one point I did have it saying trick or treat over the middle and it was really cute, but you went right over her face, so I didn't stick with it. But this part right here, up and down in the middle, like, hang on, let me do this so it makes much more sense. Hang on, we'll, we'll switch with yellow. And here, this area, right? It's still teal. Why is it still teal? Thank you. Um, this area in the middle, the part that I just made yellow, this is how Facebook wants the mobile to look. And you can't upload multiple pictures. So you can only do the one. So, and on, let me change this back, on Facebook desktop version, oh no, it looks like that. So this is kind of like, the worst of both worlds. It's not the best of both worlds. It's the worst of both worlds, um, where it is the maximum you can have on either one. And the area in the middle is what signifies what's still safe. Okay. So that's what you're doing. You got your mobile and then you got your desktop. Now you typically want to design for desktop. Although Facebook is a highly, it's one of those sites that's highly, highly, highly used in mobile. So just keep it in mind, you know, who your audience is going to be. Um, but I just find it's easier to start with desktop because it's larger and then go to mobile. So that way I can kind of cram in. A lot of people work the other way where you start out with the least possible viable product and then you work your way out. It's just personal preference, what you want to do. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with how we do a collage, which is the whole reason you clicked on this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do, being that it is like three days from Halloween, two days two days from Halloween, we're going to go ahead and do a Halloween um, trick or treat cover art photo. And we're going to do it for a page. So we don't even turn off our little profile blop out there. And then we're going to go ahead and design this. I'm going to use the words trick or treat. And then I'm going to show you how to do the collage using the rectangle tool. And I'm not going to have any voice over here, but you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and get started. This is deposit photos. This is where I get everything from, and I'll put an affiliate link down there below. They are awesome. They're cheap, they're efficient, <laughs> and yeah, I'm a fan. What do I want to do for a background? I want something simple. Oh, that's cute. I'll do that.
Uh, so I've got these set up. I'm going to go ahead and get my photos in. I can see right now I've got one that's not really where I want it to be. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and get this done. This would have been really cute if I had done this in like a candy corn or something, you know, like put different photos in candy corn. Too late now. <laughs> um, all right, so let me go grab my photos. Let's see. So we're going to start with the one on the end here. Stick all my photos in here. All right, so the first one we're going to do, and I might be able to use two of this for one for a different one, and you know, because there's there's a split here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where my petals are. That's not the one I want. What I'm doing is I'm holding that control and I'm clicking over top of the rectangle until I find the one that I want. Now I've got the one I want highlighted. My image up here is still highlighted and then I'm going to hit the masking tool. Boom! Masked. There's a problem with this though, so we'll stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and get the photos switched over. these guys and it was important to have the stroke on them originally because it, it helps you with your layout like the stroke is part of the width of the image so you want to have that in your face when you're dispersing your images and what I'm doing is holding down alt selecting the stroke and then dragging up to where I want to be so watch alt drag the effects to the new layer Boom, there you go. So that's that. I think in retrospect, I probably would go ahead and turn down the opacity. Nope, not on that. Definitely not on the page. I'm sorry, wrong one. This opacity. Yeah, just a smidge. So it's not so intense with the background, like it's competing. Like I wonder how it would look if we made it orange. Let's try it. What's it going to do? Not work. What was the stroke effect we had on that? 90. All right. See so if you just drag it right on top of it, but see, it's not going to work with the orange up against it. So we know that maybe we'll leave the middle orange, but the rest of them, we're just going to leave as the white. Let's see here. This is where we want to be. Stroke. Move this to 90. Yeah, a little bit better. All right, and this will overwrite. If I do the alt stroke down to all these other ones, it will overwrite. What's there? Get your image and then go back through and get a selection of your, of your um, whatever space you're trying to fill in. And then you can just do a mask and then boom, you've got your collage. And the way you get the space between the grids is doing the stroke of your background color. Or in this case, I had a, an accent color of white and then one of orange. So, and I think looking at this, I'm gonna put this back to, to 100%. This is the problem with being a designer. You're never like done with it. Like you keep tinkering with it, so. Okay guys, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot you how to show you how to save it out. Now you'll see it. I did keep messing with the text afterwards because designer can't leave anything alone. But what I do is I go to file. Um, I don't know how to get to it on here. There we go. Save for web legacy. I know you're not supposed to use this anymore, but I do. <laughs> it's just alt shift control S and click up here. Now this is the part I was telling you about. You need to get this under a hundred 
1.3k, right? And right in the original, it's at 1.3 megs, so that's lovely. But typically, I have found that you can knock stuff down to 60, and it still looks pretty darn decent. I mean, you can kind of see right here where the glow is starting to fade a little bit. Like, it's the colors are not as popping. But you're dealing with the third-party sandbox here, so you got to kind of go with what they're telling you to do. So this is right at that 100 mark, and you can kind of mess with it, see if you can get a little higher with that going over. Oh, that's over. So I can get to 62%. Um, you can also look at what it is for a JPEG or a PNG, but that's usually much higher. Um, so I typically just go with a JPEG. You can do progressive, try without. It, it, some of the stuff doesn't really make that big of a difference. But basically, rule of thumb, you're going to go 60% optimized and then save it out if it's under 100. And then desktop, we're going to go Halloween. That's it. And now that's what you'll upload and it will be crystal clear. But that's it. That's my design. This is what I'm going to put up on the on the page for now. And uh, I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions or maybe I sped through something, leave them in the comments below. I'm very active on YouTube and I'm very good about answering stuff. Otherwise, I would invite you to get jump on the email list because I send out this kind of stuff all the time and they're easy tutorials. So I think you'll find them useful. So to get to that, you just go to creationdepot.com forward slash email. That's it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.